Hello and welcome back to the second part of this tutorial about using the new input system in Unity. First of all, I want to create a new C# script that we are going to create uh, to use for our player input to inform our player about the input from our new input system. Let me call this player input platformer new. Okay. So this will be my script. Let me open it up in Visual Studio. Get right first thing that we want to do is at the top we want to type using and we are going to be using unity engine dot input system now what we can do is we can create our player input config and this is our script that was auto generated from our input actions that we have configured in the additional menu so let's call it input equals and actually we can create it when we start our game. So we can create awake and we can create input equals new. And since this is not a mono behavior, we can create this player input config in our player input platformer new script. Now the only problem is, if, is that if we go to it, so right click and go to definition, we are going to open our player input config. This has this add symbol at the start and it defines all of our input it is a lot of auto-generated code, so you don't have to worry about it. But at the bottom of this, it defines the interfaces that corresponds to our action maps. So first we have our player movement actions, which has on jump, on movement and on open menu. Those, has, uh, those are exactly the same that we have defined. And our I menu actions has this on exit menu. So how can we start using those? Well, we need to go back to our player input platformer new. And what we need to do is we need to actually implement those interfaces to our player input platformer new script. So we need to type player input config.i and we have those i menu actions and i uh, player movement actions. So let's add those and player input uh, input config.i menu actions. And those will be underlined with the red squiggly line. We need to right click on those quick actions and implement those interfaces, which will simply create for us those methods that are called by the events sent from our new input system. Now, the only problem is that those events are sent to our player input config and not to our player input platformer new script. So we need to assign our script to our in our awake when we create our input equals new player input config what we need to do is type input dot menu and we need to call set callbacks and basically what this method will do is we'll send the callbacks from our menu to our player input platformer new and we need to pass here an i menu actions this way we have implemented it uh, into our class so now we can pass this and now our input our new input system will send us through our player input config the messages about the actions that we have defined here so on exit menu on jump on movement on open menu into our player input platformer new now if it sounds a bit complex this is only because we are taking the code approach of course you could go back to your unity and again create this player input uh, component so assign here the player input but if you assign here your uh, action map and you set the uh, behavior to send your unity events, you still need to create those unity events or those methods on exit on jumping that takes in the context and you need to process it in your own script. So basically the other path using pre-made player input component would require you to do exactly the same. Well, maybe without extending or implementing those interfaces. But this gives us a better overview of how the input works so that you can play around with it using the code. In any case, we have set the input menu set callbacks for the menu. We now need to do the same input dot movement, player movement, set callbacks and this. And one additional thing that we need to do to actually enable our action map is call our input dot movement, player movement dot enable. And basically this enables our uh, player movement action map because by default both of those are disabled and this gives us the power to stop listening to the movement input when we for example enter the exit uh, the, the menu 
in our game or the inventory. And basically in our code all it would mean is that we need to find our own open menu and here we would like to call our input dot player movement dot disable and at the same time we would call input dot menu dot enable and uh, this would be all that we would need to do to disable listening to our movement when we are in our menu for now uh, we are going to delete it we are going to go back to this method so now all we have to do is to actually implement all of those uh, callbacks so the methods that are assigned to the different actions of our new input system now the problem is that we are receiving this context and not the values like input.get axis horizontal or vertical return as a value this gives us a context in all of those we receive this context if we visit the input class of the previous system at the bottom we will find all the methods and we had this get key up get key down get key all those different methods in our case we have this context and we need to check if context dot phase and this is input action phase and we need to check if this is equal to input action phase and we have couple of options here if we go to the documentation of the input action phase it explains that we have uh, different options for our input it can be disabled it can be waiting the action is enabled and waiting for the input it can be started uh, so it is uh, associated control has been actuated but it is not finished being pressed so for example when you press the trigger on the gamepad we start with a small value but it is not pressed till the end and we have this is performed so we have actually clicked this and it has achieved the maximum value and we have cancelled which means that we let go of the key so performed and called are basically the same as get key down and get key up so back to our code when I want to press the exit menu, I want to check if this was performed, is I have, if I have actually pressed the escape key or the start key. So only in this case, I want to, for example, debug.log and I want to log menu pressed. Okay, for now, let me delete all the other throw exceptions for my methods and we are going to simply test our on exit menu action. Now before I can test my class I need to make sure that my class implements iAgentInput which is an interface that my game uses to drive my agent. All it did was added some events and a property of type vector2 that I need to implement. Okay and this will be it. And before we can test it actually I have put this logic on exit menu. Now this event is tied to the menu state and not to the player movement state which is currently active so let's ctrl x to cut this method from on exit and put it in the on open menu which is available for us in the player movement state okay so now we should be ready to test let's save our script let's go back to unity okay now first of all i will need to select my player and since my player was using this player input script this old input system i will remove this component and add here the player input platformer new and if you were using this event systems or some sort of ui in your game you need to also select your event system or game object and select standalone input module it will tell you that it also needs to use the new input system simply click this replace with input system and this class will be added so now it should all be working let me press play you should be able now to press escape or start button on your controller and the menu press debug.log statement should be played uh, should be shown when you click those buttons great so we know that our system works so let's finish it let's go back to our player input platformer new class and let's implement it and i will adjust it for my agent that uses those events to move basically i want to call this event action on attack when i press attack button on jump when i press the jump button on jump release when i release button on movement when i want to move my character and i save the movement value into the, our movement vector and i also have on weapon change now in our case i only have this on exit on jump on movement on open menu so since my default agents doesn't open the menu only the player i need to create public and i can create unity event and this will be my own unity event right click here quick actions and you say using unity engine dot events and i will call this on menu 
and this will be simply an event that will i will be able to assign an uh, a function to and let's go back to our events so we have this on open menu what i want to do instead of debug.log i want to call on, on my own menu question mark dot invoke and i want to inform any method that is assigned to this that menu was opened now beside this i also want to disable my player movement but let's leave it for now and i will show you why we want to do this for now let's focus on implementing the remaining parts basically the same thing will happen on exit menu we also want to check if phase is performed we want to then call on menu question mark dot invoke now on jumping for my in my case uh, i'm calling two actions when i perform the jump and when i let go of the jump button so what i want to do is here is check if context dot phase if again this is equal to input action phase dot performed i want to call my on jump pressed so on jump pressed event question mark dot invoke so i want to start jumping but if my context dot phase is equal to input action phase dot cancelled which is as i have said uh, this is when our button is let go of i want to call on jump released question mark dot invoke so this is a bit different compared to what we have previously when we have checked if get but uh, get key down get key up instead we need to check this phase to get those events now in case of our movement event things are a bit different while here we only received one callback here we want to constantly check for the movement so as i have mentioned before i have this public vector to movement vector to which i want to save all the values that i receive from our new input in the on movement i want to call this dot movement vector equals and i can use context dot read value and i know that i have set this to be vector 2 so I need to read this and this is why I am creating this new script because you need to know this stuff connected to the new input which is not making it a bit as abstract as you would think so you need the script to know about the input and what it is sending to you now the issue is that this context is only sent in this event if there is some other place that you want to read right now the current value you can call this dot movement vector equals and we can access the input which is our reference to our player input config and we can call on this player movement dot movement and we can call on it read value of type vector 2 so basically while this context is only passed when this on movement event is invoked by our input system this line will work when you are just reading the value of the keys assigned to the movement action in your new input system configuration so this might be very useful if you want to just read the value without worrying if uh, you need that you need to listen to this event okay and beside this in my setup i have this action on move so i need to call this on move question mark dot invoke and i will pass this dot movement vector to my player agent to keep it moving okay we are back in unity and i will expand my player because here in the player ui i have this in menu in game menu panel that i want to activate and i have on this a method in the in game menu ui i have this toggle menu basically i want to call this method when i want to toggle my menu in the game now if i press play I will see that now I can use my keyboard arrow keys as well as the WASD as well as the D-pad as well as the left stick to start moving and I have the A key or the south button to be jumping but if I go to my menu clicking escape that will now show my menu I will show you how you can implement this selection of buttons when you are using the controller I can still move my player in the background and this is because my code doesn't respect that there is a pause and some of uh, some parameters of my sprite render I are tweaking our player as well as the uh, animation system is being triggered so this is not something that i want to have in my game so that's why i can go back to our player input uh, platformer new and 
when I am entering uh, the menu, so I open the menu, what I want to do is call input dot player movement disabled and I want to now call my input dot menu dot enable and I want to copy this because I want to do exactly the opposite when I call on exit. I want to disable uh, enable now that uh, player men uh, movement uh, map and I want to disable the menu map. Okay, so now if I save this and go back to Unity, okay, I will press play again. Now I can move if I press escape or start. I can now not move my player even if I press movement keys because my input system is not registering the inputs from those devices, but I can still use it in my UI to select the button that I want to click. And how that is it done? Well, basically in my in-game menu panel, what I have is a script called um, in-game menu that has this first selected button assigned. And what I do here is uh, when I call, call the toggle menu, I call event system, find object type of event system, and I set the selected game object to be the first selected game object to, to my button that is called reset, uh, restart button. And in the event system in your UI, you can uh, see this event system first selected. If we press play, you will see that uh, in the uh, bottom right corner of Unity, you can see event system. If I press start button, the selected will be restart button. If I press arrow down, the selected will be exit button and it works automatically. So this is something that you can use to use your controller in your menu and to ensure that it can interact with your menu. Okay, it was a pretty long video, but I hope that it gave you some idea of how you can use the new input system, how much work does it require to properly use it, or how little it requires if you just want to read the values from it. But basically, it is much more work compared to the old input, but it gives you much more abstraction and you can easily add new controls to your input system without modifying the scripts that you already have created. And the scripts will be available on the GitHub repository, the link will be in the description if you want to download them. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video, if you did, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next video. Take care!